and welcome to our Lantern Kids Church online service today. Now, as you can see, we are in a different setting. We are down at the beach and I have brought my breakfast because we're going to be thinking today about breakfast at the beach. Now, I wonder what different locations have you been to for breakfast that are not at home? Have you been to the beach or where else have you been? Now, today's story is about Jesus who made some breakfast for his friends. Now, I haven't got a barbecue here, and I don't know, have you had any barbecues this year yet? I haven't, but I have made um, a sandwich because Jesus, he had some bread with his friends, but he also cooked some fish. And so I have got a fish finger sandwich. Do you like fish finger sandwiches? Well, I do, and I'm gonna enjoy my breakfast now. We are going to be hearing more about the story of Jesus making a breakfast for his friends shortly and we're going to worship God together. Let's just pray as we're here in this lovely setting and just thank God. Lord Jesus, it is lovely to be with you here at the beach and we thank you for your beautiful creation, for the sounds of the sea, for our food and our time together. Amen. in worship with this amazing song deep cries out if you're at the praise party you'll know what's coming but it's this amazing song that says from the depths of us god the deepest parts of us we want to see you we want to know you we want to know more of you and at the bridge we're going to do this bit where it goes if it goes to the left then we go to the left if it goes to the right then we go to the right and we're saying god we're going to follow you wherever you ask us to go so let's worship now Cries out to, we cry out to, we cry out 
we love you. We thank you that you died on the cross for us. We thank you that you fill us with joy and we worship you today. Amen. The Miracle of Mercy, Peter. This is Peter. Hey, Whoop. Peter was a fisherman who was called by Jesus. Hey. Peter saw the many miracles of Jesus and he heard all of his teachings. When the time came for Jesus to die and take away the sins of all the world, Jesus had one final meal with his friends. During this meal, Jesus told his followers that the time had come for him to leave them. Huh? Peter asked, where are you going? Jesus told him Peter couldn't follow him now. What? But that he would follow him later. What are you talking about? But Peter said, why can't I come now? I'm ready to die for you. Jesus said, die for me, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. Then Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives so Jesus could pray. Along the way, Jesus told his followers that they would all abandon him. Uh-oh. But Peter said, even if everyone else leaves you, I never will. Jesus said, Peter. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. But Peter wouldn't believe it and vowed that he would stay with Jesus until the very end. The other disciples vowed the same. Yeah, I hear. Later on that night, Jesus was arrested by men sent by the religious teachers and priests. Peter tried to fight for Jesus. Oh! and he cut off the ear of one of the guards. Ow. But Jesus healed the guard huh? and went quietly with the captors. All the disciples scattered just as Jesus told them they would. The men led Jesus away to the house of the high priest. Peter and another disciple followed them. Peter came to warm himself by their fire. Uh, hello. <clears throat> A servant girl noticed him in the firelight. Huh? Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. Oh, ma. But Peter denied it for the first time. He said, I don't even know him. <sighs> After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. Oh. Peter for a second time said, no, I'm not. Ah, uh, okay. <sighs> About an hour later, a man who knew the man whose ear Peter cut off said, Didn't I see you in the olive grove with Jesus? This must be one of them. He comes from the same place as all of them. Yeah, you're right. But Peter said, No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. And then Peter heard the crow of the rooster. <laughs> Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Jesus' words flashed through his mind, and Peter left the courtyard weeping. Then Jesus died and was placed in a tomb. The disciples heard that he had come back from the dead. Peter even saw the empty tomb and believed that Jesus was alive again. And Jesus appeared to the disciples to show him that he was alive. Some of Jesus' followers were together when Peter said, I am going fishing. Okay. So they all went out to the sea, but caught nothing all night. At dawn, they saw a man standing on the beach. Oh, hey, over here. The man called out to them and said, Have you caught any fish? Nope. The man said, Throw out your net on the right side and you'll get some. Uh, okay. So they did, and they couldn't bring in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then one of the men on the boat said to Peter, It's Jesus! When Peter heard that it was Jesus, he swam to the shore while the others pulled in the load to the boat. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. Mmm, I miss it. Got it! 
Jesus said, come have some breakfast. While they were eating, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, you know I love you. So Jesus said, then feed my lambs. Then Jesus asked again, do you love me? Peter said again, yes, you know I love you. And Jesus said, then take care of my sheep. And then a third time, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. So he said, you know everything. You know that I love you. So Jesus said one last time, then feed my sheep. And so Peter went on to feed Jesus' sheep by helping establish the church and by writing books that we can now read in the Bible. And though he denied Jesus, he was forgiven. And many came to know the love and forgiveness of Jesus through Peter. to 
to give them the food of God's word, to tell them all about what Jesus had done, his miracles, his life, how to live, how to, how to live, how to love. And so Peter was given a special job to do. And in that moment, that was Jesus saying, I forgive you, I still love you. You know, what you've done doesn't matter. I love you and I died for you. And it's the same with us. Whatever we have done, we can go to Jesus. It doesn't matter how bad it is or how small or big we think it is. Jesus loves to hear from us and he just wants us to come to him as little children and say, Daddy, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And he wants to give us a big hug. So if there's something that you need to say sorry to Jesus about, then please do do that today. Or if you need to say sorry to a friend or one of your family members, then I'd really encourage you to do it. So you don't have that horrible feeling in your stomach like I sometimes get. Okay. If God so loved us, we also I'd love, 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 love one another, love, 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 love one another, love, 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 love one another. relationship that you have got in your life either with your parents your siblings your friends um, that has become a bit broken because of the things that you have said or that you've done okay and when we break a relationship with one of our friends or our parents or our siblings that also breaks our relationship with God and as we've already heard God loves us so much and he just wants us to come to him and to say that we're sorry, that we want to mend that relationship again. So think of who that person is and what you need to say. And when I was on the beach, I had a go at just writing the word sorry in the sea. So as you, we pray now, perhaps look at that word and watch how the water covers it over and wipes it away. And in the Bible, this is in 1 John, if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. We can trust God, he does what is right, he will make us clean from all the wrong things we have done. Okay, so he will wipe those sins away, just like the water washes away um, the words in the sand. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the things that we have said, that we have done. 
where we have hurt another person. And we ask that you just forgive us now and we name that person now. And ask that they will forgive us too. Thank you that you love us so much and that you forgive us, that you died for us on the cross to make us clean and to have that relationship with you again. And we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Hello everybody and today for our craft this Sunday we are going to be looking at the passage John 32 when Jesus came to see his friends for the third time after Easter and today we have th four James girls we've got Bella and we've got Millie and we've got Sophia Hello. and a little Olivia is just hiding in the corner <laughs> and they're very busy already doing our craft so yeah. you need things again just stuff that you have around the house so it's nice and easy so if you're not able to leave the house or get out most of this stuff you should have at home so it's nice and easy for our parents so first of all we need a plate and some fancy pens we can put ours in jars <laughs> And the first thing we're going to do, as you can see, that Millie has started colouring in our plate. We are going to pretend that this plate here is a bucket. And this bucket has got lots of water in, which is why we're colouring it in blue. And Millie is doing a fantastic job. It is your favourite colour. And Sophia has also been colouring it in blue. I like how it looks all ziggy zaggedy. It looks like this sea. Now also, while you're busy colouring in, we have found lots of fish. Now, Sophia is our little computer whiz. <laughs> Ever since lockdown and she did her homeschooling. So we have printed off some fish. And as you can see, we've got lots of different kind of fish. We've got flounder here. We've just got some fish. Sophia very kindly chose lots of fish for us to colour in. But if you haven't got a computer, that's fine. Because you can just draw some fish and cut them out. Or if you don't want to, you could just get, you could draw them on your plate. You don't have to cut them out at all. Ours are already cut up, as you can see. And bless you. <laughs> so now, once we've finished colouring in our plate, we're going to colour in our fish. Now we've also continued with those lovely felt tip pens. But girls, it would be lovely if we got our fish nice and colourful. So we've got lots of felt tips. What colours should we do? We've got red and yellow. Bellas look lovely as well. Now we have, oh yeah that's beautiful, what yeah. fish are you going to colour in? That one. So, yeah. as, colour them in nicely, yeah, well, yeah. and then when you finish colouring in them, we've got some glue, as you can see, and then we're going to stick them down. So, Sophia, can you oh. colour in and stick some of those fish down? Is that yeah. lovely? Bella's very busy in that corner. We're colouring them and then we're going to stick them down. Now we're being very precise. I will just show you very quickly using minis. So I reckon on these plates, I think we could probably fit about four. But it depends how big your fish are. Some of them might be really, really big. Yeah. And some of them might be really small. Okay, small. What this plate is really all about is about how Jesus' his friends were very busy one morning and they were having breakfast and they were out looking for some fish, at fish at the and they didn't know that Jesus was back. Mm. They didn't know that other people had seen them. Yeah. I know. So what we're doing is we're pretending that <laughs> we're catching our fish. Can you see? Morning, and Jesus helped them that day. They were Morning. having no luck catching any fish, and he came along and he caught loads. Morning. Now in the Bible, when we read it, Jesus quite likes food, doesn't he, girls? There's loads of different story where Jesus just eats with his friends, and that's where he finds time to talk to them. And chat about faith. And that's what we do at our house, don't we? We sit around our table and we say thank you to God and we talk about our day. And that is what Jesus does. This day was very special though, because this was the third day, like we said, wasn't it? That he came. And he was, his friends were so surprised. They couldn't believe it. They were so shocked because they thought he was gone. That's a bit how we're feeling at the moment, haven't we? 
don't know about you guys, but some of us, we've not seen some of our friends and our family for such a long time, have we? Yeah, and it does, it makes us feel a bit sad. And a lot of going crazy. Hey? So I thought that older children, if you didn't want to colour them in, maybe you could write on your fish how you think you might be feeling. What do you think, Bells? How do you think you'll be feeling if you haven't seen your friends for so long? How do you reckon you might be feeling? I'm so sad! That's excited, yeah? A little bit sad, I guess. Super sad. Please, do you want to give them a hug but we're not allowed to? Give it a little bit of an elbow? Yeah, a bit of a kiss. We're not allowed to do kisses, but we can maybe blow a kiss. <laughs> yeah, but maybe not blow in their direction. It's really hard at the moment. And Jesus and his friends were so happy, but also a bit confused, weren't they? Yeah. So, when we finished with our plates and our fish, as you can see on me, there are lots and lots and lots of holes. Because they did catch them with buckets, did they? If they were to put that up in the water, what would happen? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, the fish would just swim away. So, that's beautiful. Look at this fish. That's very colourful. Make sure you stick that down. We need to make a net. So if you've got a hole punch nearby, maybe ask your parents, because it might be a bit tricky, to hole punch them. Yeah, yeah thank yeah, you, yeah. Bells. A big hole punch. And what we've done is we've got a hole punch and we've gone them all around the plate. That's a lovely fish. I'm going to stick them onto your plates. And you've also seen down here, we've got some wool. But if you haven't got wool, you might be able to use string. We'll just find some. Whoa, looks a bit like spaghetti. <laughs> and we can thread the hole. Can you see if you can thread it? We're going to thread it through the hole. And it goes all the way to the other end. And we're going to start to make it look like nets. It's crazy. And we're going to keep going. And keep going. Until we've got a zigzag. So it looks. It's very funny, apparently. String and wool is, is hilarious. Mommy, and as you can see, that looks beautiful. Come in. See if you can even have that one. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it comes up to bed, swimming. I'm really sorry. But this is how a craft sometimes goes in our house. It all just ends a bit silly, and it probably ends silly in your house too. So, that's kind of how it's going to look in the net and some fish. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry it was a little bit crazy this week, but we're really blessed that you've been here, and I hope you enjoyed our crazy giggly craft for this week. God bless, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. You say bye, girls. Bye. Okay, so thank you, Caroline and the girls, for that craft there. And we will be back next week for another Kids Church online service. But don't forget, say sorry to anybody that you need to say sorry to and sorry to God. And how about having breakfast on the beach? See you next time. Bye.